In the last video, we looked at piecewise defined functions and what they meant. We did a couple of examples, and we did this guy. Right, and we just looked at how do we plug values into this, how do we know whether it goes into one piece or the other, and now we want to look at what does the graph of this look like. So, the best way to do this is to make sure that you have a good pencil and a good eraser. Um, because what we want to do is we want to look at this guy, this x plus 5. And as we were doing before, I'm going to let this guy be my pink guy right here. And remember that f of x is the same thing as saying y. So for the pink guy, we can just say that y equals x plus 5. And by doing that, we can easily pick off the slope, which is 1 over 1, and the y-intercept, which is the ordered pair 0, 5. Okay, so using that information, we're going to graph this line. But we're not going to graph the whole thing. Like we're going to start off graphing the whole thing, but then we're going to make some cuts here. Okay, so you start with the y-intercept of 0, 5. So that's going to be right here. And then you're using the slope of 1 over 1. So up 1 over 1 like this. And the same thing going back down and to the left. Okay. So if we were to connect these dots, we have this nice linear shape, which is what we expect because we have a line, right? But I don't want this whole thing. You see here that it says when x is less than or equal to 2, which means where x is equal to 2, I'm going to take my green marker, I'm going to draw a little cut line coming up through here. I want you to imagine it's the same little dashed line that you would have seen when you were in elementary school that said, here, cut here. That's the same thing as what we're doing. And so I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to cut. I'm going to erase right there. Now, this says when x is less than or equal to 2. So that means you keep the pieces that are on the left side of, of 2. I don't know if it does say negative 2. I don't know. But on the left side of 2. There we go which means I'm going to erase whatever's here on the right side. That stuff is now gone. It's, a, it's like it never existed. So what we're saying here is that your function is this line all the way up to where x is equal to 2. And then it's going to stop. And when it stops, we look at this inequality to determine what we need to do. This says x could be equal to 2, which means this point gets filled in. And so let's go over this in pink, because this is the pink part of the function that we're doing. And even including that guy. Okay. So now let's look at the other piece. This says negative 2x plus 1. We're going to do this guy in blue. So think of this as y equals. y equals negative 2x plus 1. We can identify the slope. That's negative 2 over 1. And we can also identify the y-intercept because it is in slope-intercept form, and that is going to be 0, comma, 1. Now, just like we did for the last piece, we want to graph this guy and just graph it in its entirety. And then we're going to come back and start cutting the pieces that we don't need and don't want. So we start here at 0, 1. Using the slope of negative 2 over 1, we're going to go down to over 1, just like this. And then we need to reverse that and go up and to the left. So we have a line that looks like that. All right, so if you connect the dots, you connect the dots. Don't miss them like I'm doing. So if you connect the dots, you have this line. But you see where we have a problem. Functions are supposed to pass the vertical line test. And this would not pass, right? We have function notation, so it has to pass the vertical line test. But this guy fails, almost. And this is where the condition comes in. It says x is greater than 2. So for this new guy that I just drew, he's also going to get cut right here when x is equal to 2. And this says keep the pieces where x is greater than 2. That means keep the pieces that are on the right side here, which means we have to get rid of everything else. So even though I just drew that, 
those pieces are not actually part of my graph. This guy starts right here and he goes down at a rate of 2 over 1 and we have that line. Now since this says x is greater than 2 but not equal to it, we're going to keep this as an open circle. That open circle denotes that we are not including that endpoint. And then this just comes over here. So that's what a piecewise defined function looks like. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to have a gap like you see here. Uh, a lot of times they do. Um, sometimes they, they are connected. It really just depends. Now, just so you get an idea about other uses of these piecewise defined functions, you can think about what your pay looks like. Right? The value of your paycheck. And we know that your pay is going to look something like this. If you work hourly, it looks like that. It's just linear. The more hours you work, the more you get paid. But for most businesses, there's this cut line that happens right here at the 40 hour mark. Because after you've been working for 40 hours, you start getting paid at time and a half. You earn an extra 50% uh, for your hourly rate, which means this guy stops right here, but then it picks up and it starts going at a steeper rate. And that's a piecewise defined function. And you could even write this out, and it would look something like this, that your pay, based on the hours that you work, just to make the math easy for us, let's say you get paid $10 an hour. So if you take the number of hours times 10, and this is going to work as long as you are working between 0 and 40 hours. Now, if you end up working more than 40 hours, the pay is a little bit different. So you get paid $10 for those first 40 hours plus now you're going to get paid $15 for every hour over that so that's going to be $15 for every hour beyond that which is going to look like this H minus 40 and this is going to be when H is greater than 40 if you don't believe me uh, play around with the numbers and see that it's true so if you could imagine if you worked uh, let's suppose you worked 42 hours Okay. When you work 42 hours, you have 40 hours that are paid at a rate of $10 per hour. And then you have two hours that are beyond 40, that went above and beyond. And these will be paid at a rate of $15 an hour. And that's what you see right here. So the first 40 hours get $10 an hour. But the 15 is only going to be multiplied times what is in excess of 40. You wouldn't actually plug in 42 and say 42 times 15 because it's only the number of hours beyond 40 that would get paid at that higher rate. Okay. Another good example of a piecewise defined function is uh, tax brackets. Okay. If you don't believe me, go check it out um, and see if you can come up with a good uh, function for that. Okay. We got one more example to do, so stick around.